uh, to this story. I know that's stating the obvious because each day, although it's fairly repetitive on the news agenda, um, even the American elections has taken a back burner today. Well, certainly over here. Uh, that will re-emerge, of course, as the days go by. Uh, but there always seems to be a kind of a diversion on the COVID story. And we were troubled and fascinated, perhaps in equal measure, uh, by this. Denmark will cull its 17 million mink population in an effort to minimise the risk of them retransmitting a new version of coronavirus into humans. The Danish Prime Minister said on Wednesday that the mutated virus in farmed minks could have devastating consequences worldwide and action was necessary. Why is this story not getting more traction? A government report found that uh, found the mutated form of coronavirus from mink has now been found in 12 people in northern Denmark. Let's speak with Dr. Simon Clark, virologist at the University of Reading, who's been following this case. Um, extraordinary, Simon. Who'd have thought this one a couple of weeks back? Uh, a, a mass mink cull and a new mutation of coronavirus. Afternoon, Ian. Yeah, uh, we know that the virus is uh, mutating. People have been asking me about that uh, ever since February. That That's normal. That's natural. And somehow it seems to have got it from a human into a mink and then back out again. Um, what's really concerning about this is that the report that you mentioned there from the Danish government suggests that this might have the ability to suppress our body's ability to produce antibodies, which would mean that our immune systems are fighting with one arm tied behind their back mm. when they try and clear it from us. Now, it's a bit difficult to com uh, comment in detail about it because that report is written in Danish. Uh, um, my Danish isn't that good, I'm afraid. Yeah. So uh, until it comes out in English, I'll have to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Which uh, oddly, on off. that note, though, um, Simon, I was I was kind of surprised about that. Well, you you heard me say, why is this not a bigger story? Because I think this is pretty significant. I mean, it's significant yeah, if you're a, yes. it's certainly it's significant if you're a mink for a start, because there won't yeah. be any left in in Denmark. I, I'd imagine if you're a mink farmer, not that they get much sympathy around the world, but it's massively significant for you. But actually, this idea that, that this mutation of the virus would be as as troubling as you've just out, outlined, you, you'd, you'd think might be a bigger story in itself. You might, yeah. And ever since this popped up, people have been jumping up and down saying it'll burn itself out, it'll burn itself out, it'll mutate and become less of a problem. And that could have happened. It hasn't, mm. um, but it could have done. But equally, it can become more dangerous. And that's what appears to have happened. So, uh, and of course, if it can happen in mink, it could probably happen in other animals as well. Yeah, well, I was going to say on that wider point when it comes to viruses, I mean, do, you know, do pigs get the flu? Do monkeys get other viruses? Pigs, you know, pigs definitely pick up human flu viruses, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And we know that all sorts of things come from monkeys uh, to humans as well. That, that sort of... Uh, uh, primate jump is not a difficult one. Yeah, make. I would imagine. Um, and in, in terms of uh, mink, I mean, have, have they been under the spotlight before in your world as, you know, well, as, here's a new virus, let's keep our eye on the minks because we know what those kids are like. Um, is no, that, is... I, I've, I've got to say, uh, uh, they're not an animal which really often crosses my mind. No, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's anything specific about mink that make, make them uh, make them any more dangerous than anything else. Well, yes, I mean, they look lovely and cuddly, but they would actually take your face off. We know that much, don't we? Yeah. But um, in, in terms of how dangerous this is, I mean, do, do you sense that the Danish government are playing this a little cool? You know, the idea that it'll sort of burn itself out? I mean, that's a they're big. I'm sure somebody in a wet market somewhere on the other side of the world perhaps thought that once upon a time. Yeah, well, I think the Danish government, uh, and the, I should say that this State Serum Institute in uh, in Denmark, who've been doing all this work, are very good at what they do. I'm sure. Uh, so I have complete confidence in their abilities. They will be watching this like a hawk yeah. to see how well, it, if it spreads. Just because it gets from mink to human doesn't mean it can go from human to human. Gotcha. I bet it probably does, though, but that's not a certainty. Yeah. And when I saw, you know, there's only been 12 people, I, I can remember back in March when we only had 13 people that had died in this country of yeah. coronavirus related or with coronavirus, with COVID-19. Um, so the fact that it's only 12 and we should always be aware of that word only when talking about viruses, particularly ones we don't know an awful lot about still. Yeah. 
it's only 12 so far. Let's yeah. hope it stays that way. Indeed. Simon, thank you. Dr. Simon Clark, virologist at the University of Reading. If you are a mink listening in Denmark, goodbye, old chap. I mean, it's been a rough old journey, I would imagine, sitting there in a mink farm as it is. But uh, that's it. You're about to be exterminated. 17 million of them. What an extraordinary story. And I think that despite the, you know, clear, devastating, you know, we joke about <laughs> people who might want to wear them. You joke about the, you know, the cuddly, troublesome uh, mink and, and the like. But actually, the, the, the biggest story here, I mean, that is devastating. 17 million animals uh, having to die. But 12 people have got it and they're kind of confident that we can sort of contain this. I mean, that's a brave set of words, isn't it? Could it jump from human to human? They think not, but our virologist there just said it probably can. Um, boy, you'd hate to have to rerun all of this again, wouldn't you? From oh, it's, We've got a new coronavirus now, and it's like the other one, apart from this one, knocks out half your immune system. Boy, I mean, you, you, based on what we've seen in the last few months, you'd simply close the world again. Is that likely to happen? I'll tell you what's going to be really fascinating. Uh, Joe Biden widely uh, suggested, uh, all bar, you know, some, I think it's Arizona, isn't it? We've got our eye on over there to see what, you know, what the next step might be. Still nothing forthcoming. 270 to win at the moment, 253 against 214 for Trump. Uh, the, the smart money is saying that it, it, it's going to be Biden. It's interesting. Yesterday morning, so I watched all of this unfold, as many of you did as well, um, throughout the night and as those results came in, um, it was, firstly, there was no landslide for Biden. Um, we knew that early doors. So no landslide for Biden. That's a shocker in itself because th the Democrats had defined uh, Trump as a, 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 almost a murderous dictator. It, from everything he touched was, was wrong. This, this guy was the worst thing possible. And they couldn't beat that with any convincing results. So the best you're going to get is a bit of a win for Biden, not the landslide they were predicting. And even in the Senate and the House of Representatives, it, there's going to be no landslide going on there. In fact, the Senate it, more likely to become or remain Republican in that respect. So all of that is going on. It was about seven in the morning till about 10 in the morning that it switched and went from its 80% chance going to be Biden to its 80% chance going to be Trump. And it switched. And by the time we came on air, that story was still a bit up and down. It could be both. Uh, but it was only hours later that it sort of switched again and said, well, all bar some miracle. And I would imagine Trump's team probably had the number crunchers from you know, number cruncher central uh, sitting around the Oval Office saying, Mr. President, this is unlikely to happen. So a quickly convened press conference kicks place and he cites corruption, um, which is outrageous, by the way. Even if you're a massive Trump supporter, you should see that correctly as outrageous for a president to cite corruption and illegality, telling the world he'd won an election when literally he hadn't. I mean, even if you think about the, if you're sure there's been some corruption, I've, I've seen so much mischief on social media about that. But even if you thought that at that point, he had not won an election. To declare himself a man who just won an election is extraordinary and dangerous.